Good morning, everyone. Um, today I uh, woke up to some really nice WhatsApp messages after being in, the, in a bit of a turmoil last night. So uh, what happened was uh, that I decided with Lionel and Augie to increase the Brothers in Christ group to six people from three people. And um, I guess that move led me to step out of my comfort zone because, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's way easier to just stick to your group of close friends rather than expand the group. So I was thinking about it and I prayed about it last night because it left me quite unsettled, I would say. And God told me that when you read his word, you are meant to spread it and not just keep it to yourself. In other words, I think he told me that it's good to grow the community and just get more people to grow in faith with you. So that's why I got out of that prayer and I thought it was a really reassuring thing which he conveyed to me. Okay, so that's that. I think the lesson to this is when you are in some kind of turmoil or I guess dilemma, just offer it up to God and He will send you some response. It may not be as perfect as the one I got, but <clears throat> it will be a response nonetheless. And a lot of the time, if it's from God, it's definitely going to have a lot of wisdom behind it. Anyways, on to the daily reflection today. So today, <clears throat> I watched two videos so far, um, both recommended by Augie, and both, I would say, ha have a pretty big impact. Yeah, so I will share them one by one. First one is by Bear Grylls. Um, it's titled, A Moment to Reflect with Bear Grylls, A Message for Easter. I desperately need the presence of Christ with me. In me, sorry. All of us struggle. We have a never-ending source of support or energy. All we need to do is depend on God's help and power for each and every task we face. Depend on God's help and power for each and every task we face. He starts every day on his knees by he beggars, quietly reminding himself that he desperately needs the presence of Christ in him. So, as you know, Bagrills is a very adventurous, outdoorsy person, quite famous for I guess living the wild and pulling off quite crazy stunts and I never knew that he was Christian so I think the knowledge that he takes time out of every single day to just kneel down and pray to quieten his heart and ask God for what he wants for that day is really I guess the word is comforting so what he asked for he asked for forgiveness confidence and strength i think i only asked for confidence and strength and wisdom but i should definitely start asking for forgiveness as well because it's not every time or rather we don't we don't give back often enough and i think asking for forgiveness is one way we can truly give back to God. Bagrills also asked God to protect his family and guard his words, attitude and actions. He, he asked God to take away his fears and give him peace and be with everyone who is struggling in life. So much wisdom behind what he says, man, it's crazy. He says, God is always there. There's nothing too impossible for him. 
There's nothing God cannot help us through. No mountain too steep or no cave too dark. This is a quote. Be sure about this, that I am with you, even till the ends of the earth. A quote by J.C. Man, Jesus Christ. Um, Bagrio says that <laughs> we are drawn to our knees so that we can be drawn closer to him. A lot of wisdom behind that as well. Yeah. I wrote here, we never, I never knew that was why we knew. <laughs> yeah, too, too proud to kneel sometimes, you know, to be honest. But now I know. He blesses us so we can bless others, exclamation mark. He calls us to be ambassadors of earth. I think to break this down, we must first find find out why and how we are so blessed in our position. It doesn't have to be big blessings, but it can be as little as, oh, it's such a blessing today that I get to wake up to enjoy this beautiful morning. Or it can be, oh, I'm so blessed to be able to I guess experience God's love firsthand through other people. And I think in turn we use the blessings that we receive and spread it to other people. In other words, being and being his ambassadors on earth, like his disciples. So that was for the Bear Grylls video. Okay, next we have the hardest video that they have ever made by Nate and Sutan. This video was really good. It was really thought invoking and it was although it was only seven minutes long, I took thirty minutes to really break everything down. And um Yes. Yep. And they said they tried to make they tried to make or rather they tried to make their videos uplifting and fun. But because they love their viewers, with love comes truth. And truth is not always fun to hear. They read the Bible daily to try and understand what it says. Because ultimately, you cannot count on others to really tell you what the Bible says. You yourself have to personally first-hand read it. Because everyone get something different from the Bible. God speaks to each and every one of us differently. There's this quote. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me you evildoers. Matthew chapter 7 verses 22 to 23. This verse is quite scary to think about because Jesus is saying that even though there are people who do great acts in his name, he never knew them. As they say, or rather as Nate, Nate said, this is wild to think about. Because imagine doing miracles in his name and yet not being able to enter the kingdom of heaven because you never in the first place stopped to truly build a relationship with God. He says, the biggest tragedy is to think of people who think that they are saved and going to heaven when they actually aren't going. We are all going to stand before him one day and he is going to say one of two things. He's either going to say, well done, good faithful servant, or depart from me, I never knew you. Oh, how scary is that? <sighs> All of your eternity after that is going to be dependent on which question he, or rather which statement he says to you. 
It's so easy to toss this aside and let the cares of this world consume you because ultimately this world is very secular and not many people are religious. I can testify because I was secular for the longest time for the past 19 years of my life and I think it's only through these couple of months after the army when I truly discovered God again. But ultimately, what could be more important than Judgment Day? The bad things we come across in life are nothing in comparison to Judgment Day. All the insecurities, all the angst, all the anger we feel, all the setbacks we face, wrist fractures, ankle sprains, breakups, failed tests, all those, all those bad things are nothing in comparison to Judgment Day. The Judgment Day I'm referring to is the final judgment when you stand before God and your, and your eternity depends on what He says to you. The world likes to teach. How can a living God punish? How can He torture? Read the Bible. In Genesis, God drowns everybody on the planet. In Noah and the Ark. God told the Egyptians, If you don't let my people go, I will kill every firstborn in every household. Not every firstborn. I will kill the firstborn in every household. He is a God in justice and wrath. So if... I guess he says that if some of you think that God back then in the Old Testament is not the same as God now, today, he says that, well, you are simply not right because Revel Revelation talks about how it all ends, the end times. And he says, Jesus is omnipotent. He's the same today, tomorrow, in the past, and in the future. He's the same, always, because he's God, right? Then he says, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And I remember quite, quite clearly at this point, I started laughing to myself. Because I think that God has, I guess, changed me in so many ways within this past month. And it's crazy to think about because I would never in my life have imagined myself sitting in front of, in front of a phone just talking about, I guess, holy material or scripture. Never. I was so secular before this. Anyways, God is the God of love and redemption. That's why he sent his son to die for us, us sinners. It is all about repenting and becoming new creation, a new creation rather. You have to be born again and you have to die to yourself. This really struck me because God wants us all to just repent and turn away from our past selves because a lot of the time our past is very secular. It doesn't contain Him in it. The question He poses today is, have you surrendered your life to Jesus? We believe that we are all saved by faith alone and not by works. But do you really have faith? James chapter 3 verse 17 Faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. It's dead. Do not deceive yourself. Faith without works is fruitless. I think I can relate to this because if you listen to God's good word, but do not reciprocate it in your actions, then what's the point, right? And I guess this is really affirmed by 
James chapter 3 verse 17. There is nothing more important than your, your, than your eternity. Are you truly following Jesus? Are you obeying his commands? Are you a new creation? Well, not yet, but I can see myself becoming one. <laughs> Our prayer for this video is that it's your wake up call, that you come to know God and that he truly knows you. Amen. I think that, that that video is such a powerful video and yeah, I really appreciate Augie for sharing it with me. Thanks for sticking around if you're still here. Peace.